Hello everyone, and yes, before you ask, I did already talk about this game, except that game was the Wii version. This is the Nintendo DS version, because I now own the game legally. Uh, before this, I owned the adults only version of the game, also illegally. Are you noticing a pattern here? All right, brief explanation here. This is what a Guinness World Record looks like. Right there, I just earned the record for farthest punt distance for a copy of Wii Ski. And if you were wondering, yes, 13.5 feet. So, what do you get when you put all those wacky world records into a video game? My ex-wife. So the Wii version was all about using motion controls to beat the minigames. Balance a car on your head, jump on a pogo stick, throw a washing machine, ride a- Hey, do you have a degree in washing machine throwing? Yeah, I didn't think so. Why were you in my closet? So what the heck is the DS version? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have no idea. I assume it's the same game, I just wanted an excuse to not pay my electric bill this week. Well, no time like the present. Wait a second. Wrong version. Wrong version! Ooh! <laughs> That was just the Nintendo logo? We're in for a wild ride. Okay, let's play the actual game. Starting off, it looks exactly like the Wii game. Well, besides all the logos taking up space on the top screen, very efficient dual screen use there. Wait, top screen? Yeah, at first glance, the aspect ratio of this looks off. And that's because you play the game horizontally. First question, why? Second question, Brain Age is one of the very few DS games that uses this horizontal setup, since you only use the stylus and no buttons. But the game does use buttons, because you need to pause the game with the start button, and, and I just end up asking, why is the game horizontal? So what's the answer? You still select what region you're in and pick from a total of four characters because they ran out of budget for a fifth one. I actually like these chibi designs compared to the Wii's scary abominations, but that game had Dan. For some reason, you can do this. There's no point to it unless you want to play the game with scoliosis. And you have to name your character by, get this, dragging the letters to the name box. And you only have five letters per screen. This could have been way easier if you wouldn't be so fancy with your rotating screens and complex as all heck naming systems just to call a person the letter J. Now the world map is slightly different due to the fact that there are less mini games. Also, you walk around with the touch screen because who needs buttons anyways? Not me. Thank you, Guinness World Records, the video game on the Nintendo DS, for making me unable to press buttons. All the music is the same, online functionality, the extra quote-unquote modes, aka viewing your achievements, are all still there. But the minigames are where the game takes a turn for the unique, and also worse. Eh. They're okay. I mean, obviously, a ton of minigames had to be reworked for the handheld because of the motion controls. Hey, I'm telling you now that if this game and the DS itself had motion functionality, we would be experiencing the rapture. So all minigames use the touchscreen because remember, buttons? Ew! For every minigame, you swipe, tap, or draw on the touchscreen. They have some level of quality to them, but this game was obviously just a downgraded version of the Wii game. Or was it? Yes. Let's talk about the exclusive minigames. Dominoes. You drag the dominoes across the screen and... Oh, okay. Not too sharp of corners there. Uh, then you want... Oh, not too fast or slow either, uh, then you want to collect the coins and make the longest chain and make it to the finish line and that was the easiest world record. It's not even something like longest dominoes chain, it's just dominoes. Dominoes what? Most expensive dominoes pizza? Most amount of dominoes I shove up my- Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis box. That's at least two. Plucking feathers off of turkeys and popping balloons works much better on the DS than it did on the Wii. 
but there's one glaring issue with all of these games. The top screen. Yep, this thing is about as useful as a lifeguard at the Olympics. This is an edit I made in five minutes, and it looks miles better than having one timer in a completely separate realm taking up one screen. Plus, the timer has a studio audience that groans if you miss one of the time goals. In the Wii game, it was just a small thing in the corner, but here, it's practically yelling at my every move. You suck. You suck. Oh, shut you up! You suck. Take a shower. Take what, a shower. What I did! Take a shower. Liar! On a more positive note, blowing a huge bubblegum balloon is a highlight, as it doesn't require the touchscreen and instead requires the microphone. Okay, brace yourselves for this one. Now, I didn't have time to grind for money and buy all of the extra minigames because I'm busy right now. What? I did play some of them. Eating cockroaches. It's the same as the Wii game except to eat five instead of ten. But I'm more concerned about how fast this dude eats. Like, how? <laughs> That's not physically possible. Of all the Wii minigame conversions, Shearing Sheep is the most faithful to the original and, get this, the best one. That's not even a Wii bias. Those minigames were just better. Ignore this. Okay, but how about the actual exclusive games? This is probably one of the best. You try and get the most piercings by realizing you were playing Elite Beat Agents. You create a huge canyon by parting the Red Sea until you realize they just reused assets from the Tearing Phone Book minigame. BMX backflip, you do a backflip. It's kind of weird though. You have to repeatedly swipe the stylus, but the backflip is just so slow. It's like, hey, watch me do this backflip. <laughs> you can still buy more minigames from collecting coins from getting better scores across all minigames, but a ton of the ones locked behind the paywall are the ones you started with in the Wii version. Tearing phone books, growing fingernails, throwing a paper airplane, eating cockroaches, pulling a plane, eating a plane. Looking back on it, there are some cool games, but it mostly shares its identity with its far superior Wii brother. Even games I thought were DS exclusive were just unlockable in the Wii game like dominoes. I already thought this was one of the better DS exclusives, then I found out it was in the Wii game, I played the Wii variation, and it is even better, possibly one of my favorite games in that game too. I will reiterate, no bias. The minigames exclusive here are limited, and the games brought from console are just washing machine throwing, but worse, and way more difficult. And I speak for everyone when I say, hey, you can't talk trash about washing machine throwing, even on the DS. I mean, it may be objectively worse, but look who you're talking to. The guy with the degree in washing machine throwing. Ha, rookie mistake. Were you hiding in my closet waiting until I talked about washing machines? Yes. Bottom line is, if you want to play Guinness World Records, the Wii version is better. But hey, DS games may not be better than their Wii counterparts, but they do have something going for them. Portability. So, surely, if you want to play this game on the go, there's no question which version to get, right? Well, what if I told you that I left out the worst part of this game? It is horribly optimized. Let me try saving my game. Okay, the music completely cut out for a few seconds there. Let me try balancing this car. Okay, I immediately lose because this minigame is annoying as heck. I go back in the menu and have to watch me get zero points on this minigame that lasted two seconds. I try and go back. The game still has to save, even though I got zero points. The music cuts out again. I lose again. And when I get my new high score... New best attempt. New personal best. Where did the music go? I've started to hit the green arrow so fast that it doesn't even show up. I just start the minigame before it even appears. Plus, look at this. When you exit or start a game, these bar lines appear on screen. And yeah, 
that's a real part of this game. This game was just not nearly as responsive, good, or fun, and on top of everything, doesn't even run well, and is super slow. The Wii game is average. It's not some holy grail forgotten masterpiece or anything, but it was fun, and the DS game isn't. Plus, it's just not good. I think the world is better off without this game. Or is it? Oh, 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 I got an idea. I would say it involves soliciting, but it's not really soliciting if you're giving it to someone for free. Hello and welcome to No One Is Watching This Broadcast. Please give us funding. We are going out of business. News! In terms of news today... Can you tell we have no funding? In terms of other news, some maniac has been spotted giving out adult-only copies of Guinness World Records the video game on Nintendo DS. Luckily, one of our one reporters grabbed a copy off the seller. Uh, it doesn't show up too well on the green screen here, but we're not trying to hide that fact. So, let's pop this game into the 3DS and see how bad this version of the game really- Oh my- Oh my- oh, ah! Wait, it shouldn't have been that effective. Oh, come on! It was Zuzu Pets the whole time?! <laughs> <laughs>